Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to Cleaning Up the Mental Mess, a podcast where each week I discuss practical, simple and scientifically backed ways to help you take back control of your mental health, help others and ultimately live your happiest life. In this episode, I am covering a topic you may or may not have heard about and one that is so fascinating. Blue light and how it can really impact your mental and physical health. Joining me today all the way from Australia via Skype to help cover everything you need to know about blue light is Andy, the founder of Blue Blocks, a company that creates products that are designed to help manage artificial light and to optimize people's health goals. Just before I start, I want to thank everyone again who has left a review or subscribed to this podcast and who's shared it on social media with friends and family. Not only does your feedback help me improve each episode, but I love seeing what you guys are learning and what key takeaways you have. So encouraging and exciting. One more note before we begin, this interview was done via Skype, so the audio quality may be a little scratchy in some areas. So let's start. Andy, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to have you on the show and to hear more about this. And let's just begin with a couple of introductions. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself and how you came into light research and founded Blue Box? What's your story? Absolutely, yeah, really good, uh, really good starting point. Um, I um, I've always been interested in um, like alternative um, alternative health, um, and it all started for me probably about eight years ago. Um, I was quite overweight, um, probably by about. 15 or 20 kilos so so quite a bit overweight um and i started to utilize sort of um the standard cut some calories and um you know uh, try and lose some weight and it didn't really work for me and i tried a load of different other diets that didn't work for me so what i did was i um went and did some research myself i i found my own diet that worked for me and that then led me to sort of think a lot more critically about um my own personal circumstances but also more critically about i guess um looking for some answers in um sort of different areas of my life as well and you know i lost a lot of weight following um more like a ketogenic diet back then and that worked well for me um and then what didn't improve with with losing the weight was was my sleep and um i i just really didn't know why that was I thought you know maybe that's just something that runs in the family or you know I'm just going to be destined to to not have a good night's sleep for the for the rest of my life um so I started to do a little bit of research myself I'm a bit of a research nerd so I I have accounts with all the sort of um peer-reviewed journal sites um and and I like to sort of scroll through the latest science and and see what's out there and I, I stumbled across a paper um, that spoke about um, sort of melatonin disruption zones um, in accordance with with artificial light. Um, I started to read and um, found out that there were specific frequencies of light that say given out um, by, by your TV or your house lights after dark that um, suppress melatonin, which is a, a sleep hormone, you know, helps you get to sleep. It um, um, And then what I did was um, in this same study, it talked about sort of wearing amber glasses after dark to block these frequencies of light and it would help you sleep. So I jumped on on Amazon and um, bought myself a cheap pair, it was about $20 and um, tried them and, and I slept OK. I slept better. Um, it still wasn't perfect, but I slept better. And that was really good for me. And and what I and, and the reason I started Blue Blocks was um we I've got a really good sort of relationship with some people in, in an optics lab here in Australia. And when I read the the literature over and over, there was a common theme that was coming up and it was to block light, all of blue light and, and some of the green light. Um, so I, I got myself maybe 20 pairs of, of different branded blue blockers um, with the orange and, and sort of yellow lenses from Amazon and eBay. And I took them to my friend in this lab 
And I said, oh, can you run these through your spectrometer and tell me what frequencies of light they're blocking? And every single pair of glasses we tested wasn't blocking all the light in the melatonin disruption zone that the literature was pointing to. So I just saw it as a, as a, uh, a sort of a, a bit of a eureka moment where I was like, you know what? There's not an optimal product out here that manages light, which, um, you know, leads to leads to good sleep. So, again, speaking to my friends in the lab, I was like, could you produce specific tints for for glasses here in australia not not china like these other places um these other glasses um to actually eradicate exact frequencies that i want eradicating based on the literature and they did and we went through a lot of trials and tested these um specific lenses um and that led it um to, to led us to producing the the red lenses for after dark um and some sort of clear and yellow lenses for during the day and um, when we actually tested them, they they blocked exactly what we needed to block in line with the literature. And, you know, we, we started then to speak to people within the sort of health and wellness um, and, and sort of various doctors around the world and got them to try our glasses and, and provided the science to them. And, and this is where we are today in, in being sort of very, very large, um, large company that is basically been founded and built on credible science and, and products that have been backed by peer-reviewed academic literature. That's amazing. What a story. It's brilliant. And I love the fact that you're, that you're a, a scientist, that you're really digging into that literature and because that's very so very important that we that we have, have that base with anything. That's amazing. So can you tell, can you explain blue light and the differences between artificial and natural light? You know, talk about the spectrum because we all hear about that, but I think it's just really nice to have it as a nice, simple explanation and how this relates to your to your glasses and what they do. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a, another fantastic question. Um, a lot of people um, have the misconception that blue light is like physically seeing you know the color blue when it when it, in fact it's um it's it's a little bit more deeper than that so yeah i'll like i'll explain the differences so you have two sources of light um in our world and that's natural which is found in the sun um and you have artificial light and, and artificial light is found in things like digital um led backlit devices so like a laptop um, a smartphone um, maybe your ipad but it's also in things like your house lights so led light bulbs that are you know maybe give out sort of like a white light is very high in, in blue light um, but they're also in other sources that you might not be um, completely sort of um, aware of like you know your fridge when you open your fridge has a light in it and that's very high in the blue spectrum like your microwave or your oven or your dishwasher might have digital LEDs built into them that, that emit blue light as, as well. Maybe your television, maybe car headlights, street lamps, um, shopping malls, places like that. So in essence, if if the light isn't red or orange um, from an artificial source, then it's going to emit some sort of blue light. Now, sunlight is, um, is is a very good source of light um, it's natural and it contains all the different colors so think of a rainbow when you get the sun and, and the rain that's all the colors that are emitted by sunlight so you've got your your blues your violets your greens your, your yellows oranges um, and reds artificial light is very different it's very very high in the blue spectrum range and very, very low in the other colors. So it's not a balanced spectrum. Now, what blue light does, and blue light's present in the sun, okay? So blue light causes us to feel alert and awake. So it increases things like um, like cortisol, which makes us feel alert and, and awake during the day, which is fantastic um, if it's running on its correct cycle. Um, and it also, but what it also does, blue light, it also causes damage to cells, okay? Because it's a very high intensity form of light. And that's, that's, that's true if it's from the sun and it's true if it's from artificial sources. Now, what nature does, it's very clever nature. They always put an antidote um, into things. So it's not, um, you know, like all oh, blue light's really bad for you from from the sun. They Because the sun is very high in, a, in, in the red, um side of the spectrum as well red is actually a very restorative color so any damage that is being caused by blue during the day um, from the sun um, is actually counteracted by the red that's found in in the sun as well now you can see where i'm going with this with artificial light um obviously there's hardly any red restorative light at all so when we're use, using our digital devices watching tv or having light artificial light around us it's actually causing a lot of damage to the, to the eyes and to the skin, um, but there's actually no red light present, which is helping us to repair um, 
the the damage that's caused by the blue um so it's 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 that sort of bombardment of this blue light that's actually causing a, a disruption to not only your hormones and, and sleep if administered at the wrong time of the day but also damage to the eye as well so during the day you have things like people would work on a computer all day and they'll come the end of the day they have very dry sore eyes they might have watery eyes the attention headache and these are all symptoms of um, damage that blue light is causing to, to your eyes now after dark it becomes even more of a problem artificial light because if you think of it from an ancestral point of view we would have had blue during the day from the sun with all the other colors but when the sun sets it would be more oranges and, and ambers and, and reds and our ancestors maybe would have started a campfire, which again is those same colors, very, very much um, devoid of, of blue and green light. But what we're doing is the sun is setting, we're coming home and we're switching on our house lights, we're watching TV, we're scrolling through our smartphone, and that is telling our brain um, through receptors in the eye and the skin that it's daytime to keep cortisol levels high, to suppress melatonin. So we're getting issues like poor sleep, which is leading to um, you know, neurological problems like um, seasonal affective disorder, maybe anxiety and depression, ADHD, things like that, um, which is a consequence of poor sleep, which is brought about by switching on these artificial lights after dark and tricking our brain into thinking it's daytime not to relax and not to um and not to prepare ourselves for sleep and another really um interesting um uh, sort of piece of information that are found in the in the, in the academic literature is that during the daytime our body is in an active phase so you know it, it's producing a lot more energy to to do tasks like moving around, working at your desk or, or whatever you do during the day, going to the gym, etc. And in, in that phase, there's no sort of repair happening. Um, that has to happen in the absence of blue and green light in darkness after sunset. So what we're doing is there was a really interesting study that came out actually um, a few weeks ago that showed that the, the skin, for instance, had its own biological clock. And because we were exposing our skin to to blue light during the day and after dark the skin wasn't allowing or, or giving itself enough time to be able to repair itself it, it needed darkness to to repair itself and the same goes for the, for the eyes um, and the same goes for any other cell within the body that if we're constantly bombarding it with blue light we're not allowing it to go into a state of recovery which is going to keep our bodies in a high state of inflammation um, which can lead to a whole host of you know, sort of uh, mitochondrial or circadian mismatch type diseases. Absolutely. Well, that's, I mean, you've explained that brilliantly. And, and, and it's, as you, if you think of it, how, how we've added this to all the different things that we're doing, like eating incorrectly and not exercising sufficiently and not managing our mind, this is another area that people need to consider in our very modern technological age that has brought so many advantages that we just need to manage these technological advantages and that's what you, I'm hearing you say that you know we can't we, we live in a society where we have light we switch on lights we have our phones we have our computers this is a part of our reality so how we have to we now have to manage our reality very differently don't we that's absolutely correct yeah I mean a lot of um a lot of people will just say you know oh well you know just just don't watch tv or you know don't use your computer but you know we live in a, a or don't switch your lights yeah. on don't light light a fire and sit around the fire no it's just you know that's <laughs> it's not realistic it's, it's not 100 percent of the um of the time it's, it's just not you know there's there's maybe that one person that will sit in the middle of a field somewhere with a campfire for the rest of their life but mm -hmm. you're going to be missing out on the the wonders of technology and you know a lot of mm -hmm. um a lot of other people in in my position would be bashing technology and bashing blue light and and i think it's it's allowed for an increase of product Activity. It's allowed us to to evolve, um, you know, as, as as a species as well, and and get more done. But you know, you, you hit the nail on on the head that um, you know we just have to take proper steps to manage it, and then we can live in this exactly. environment, you know, with with artificial light. Um, and there's loads of loads of hacks that that can be done um, alongside wearing um, blue blocks glasses after dark um, to actually you know, change your light hygiene and, and environment as well. So, um, yeah, it's, we, we don't have to sit in fear.
build and switch off our devices. Uh, so. No, I love that. I love that you're being realistic about the fact that we are in this advanced technological age. And it all, you know, I train, uh, I teach on the mind brain connection, and I teach on mind management. And my audience is very familiar with how I talk so much about mind and how we've got to also look after our body. And and I love what you're saying, because you are, con- you are offering a solution to our technological age, we have light, we have to manage what we're doing with our light so you're offering a technology to manage technology with a very real issue so i mean this is and i think don't think people people are thinking about it i'm sure you know i get asked all the time what our cell phones doing and it's all over the place as you know the technology so you you're coming up with a solution which is really great Ladies, I need to tell you about a bra company that has changed my life, Third Love. With Third Love, I took a really quick and fun online quiz, which then matched me to the perfect bra shape and size. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. If you don't love it, you can return or exchange it for free and Third Love will donate it to a woman in need. Right now, they are offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash drleaf. That's thirdlove.com slash drleaf for 15% off today. And I know that you talk a lot about, uh, you sort of, you, you've spoken a little bit about, um, you've referenced anxiety and depression and stress and basically mental health is a big issue and it always has been, it's the human condition. Can you talk to Blue Light helping mental health and also not helping mental health? Because it's got both, it's got benefits to help and not help mental health. Could you speak about that? Absolutely, yeah, for for sure, and it's um it's really interesting when you actually look at um you know what Harvard Health have released um in in their sort of synopsis of anxiety and depression um they they understand that you know or, or have published that it's between about seventy and ninety percent of adults um with, with depression and anxiety and about ninety percent of children that have it um always experience some kind of sleep problem with it so you're looking at very high figures of of these um these issues so so anxiety and depression being linked with with a sleep problem um and blue light um is is also linked with i guess from a negative side with mood disorders as well it um blue light has this tendency to disrupt i guess brain plasticity um neurotransmission and also hormone and gene um hormone secretion and gene expression um and basically what's what's happening is on the the bad side blue light exposure after dark is um, as I was sort of mentioning earlier, telling our master clock, which is located in, in our brain, that it's daytime. So it's telling us that we don't need to sleep. Um, we we can be awake, we can be alert during this time. And if we do go to sleep, we're not getting good quality restorative REM and, and deep sleep. And, you know, linking this back to what Harvard is saying in terms of, you know, 90% of children and up to 90% of adults as well with, with major depression have these sleep problems, you can begin to piece together that, you know, exposing ourselves to, to blue light after dark is causing sleep problems, which is then leading to issues such as such as anxiety and, and depression the, the issue as well with with blue light after dark is that we have a each of the hormones that we release in in our body also run on something called a circadian rhythm now a circadian rhythm is is like a 24-hour cycle within the body and each cell within our body runs on its own specific 24-hour cycle so for instance, um, if we're talking about cortisol, the cortisol cycle is one that um, peaks basically between one and four hours upon upon waking. So you get the cortisol awakening response, um, sort of makes you jump out of bed um, if, it's, if it's working well. Um, and then that will be highest in the morning and it will slowly reduce down until it's almost non-existent after dark. Now, what you find is, um, and studies have shown this, that if you um, expose yourself to blue light after dark and disrupt your your sleep, you actually disrupt the cortisol um, circadian um, rhythm. And what happens is it reverses. So you get very high cortisol levels in the evening, which is very detrimental to your sleep because cortisol keeps you alert and awake. But you also get low cortisol in the mornings, which is when you need it to get that like, right, I'm going to jump out of bed. So, you know, if if the cortisol cycle has been disrupted um, and, and, you know, in, in essence reversed, 
um, your susceptibility to stress, anxiety and depression can also increase as, as a result of that as well. Now, on the, the, the good side, which is, to be fair, it's probably going to be a double edged sword as, as well with this one, is that blue light can actually be positive as well if administered at the correct time of day for, for anxiety and depression and stress. Now, I'm not talking about switching on your house light in the morning or, you know, exposing yourself to artificial blue light. The sunlight at the time of the day, um, like during the morning, for instance, um, and to be fair, throughout the day, um, contains both blue light, some of the other colours of light as well that we've discussed, and also sort of invisible frequencies of, of light as well, like infrared is very high in the morning and, and UV gets higher during sort of the middle of the day. Now, there's neurotransmitters that are released when we're exposing ourselves to the sun, and these two are, are dopamine and serotonin. So what happens when we expose ourselves to sunlight is we increase serotonin and, and dopamine. Um, and these are sort of, I guess, happy hormones, feel good hormones where, you know, they're, they're in that sort of pleasure reward section of the brain where um, if we're exposing ourselves to that, we're going to feel, you know, a lot better about ourselves. And what we find in the modern world is that People are typically getting into the office. Um, they're missing being outside in the morning. It's all artificial light, um, which, you know, isn't really going to positively affect, you know, the dopamine and serotonin levels to the point that the sun does. Um, so actually missing out on morning sunlight is actually reducing feel good hormones and disrupting the cycles of those um, neurotransmitters in, in the body. Now, another, another thing that um, is very important about getting morning sunlight in relation to serotonin is that later on in the evening and in the absence of blue and green light, serotonin actually mixes with something called tryptophan in the gut, which then produces melatonin. And as we mentioned earlier, melatonin is obviously helping us sleep and is a very powerful antioxidant. So, um, you know, Exposing yourself to blue light at the wrong times of the day is is very detrimental to sleep, but also not getting enough natural light is also going to mess up neurotransmitters and hormone secretion, which is going to later affect your ability to sleep, but also the, I guess, the how good you feel and your mood during the day. Um, and it's it's really interesting as well. Another sort of fact from Harvard Health show that, you know, you're you're more than four times more likely to develop depression as well if you have a sleep issue. So you may be listening to this podcast not having maybe an issue with with stress, depression or or anxiety yet. But if your sleep, if you're listening to this and your sleep is being affected, then you're leaving yourself four times more likely to actually develop one of those, um, you know, horrible situations later in life. So, you know, it's never too late and it's never too early to start proper sleep and circadian management with sort of looking at your light hygiene and making appropriate changes to, to really correct. I love this. I love that you're adding, it's, you know, it's giving, I, I talk about a mind toolbox and giving people mind management, mental self-care hygiene or mental health hygiene. And this is definitely something that people need to pay attention, attention to is to bring the light factor in as well because people aren't you know it's just so convenient it's created this convenient lifestyle and I love the fact that we can actually do something about that because we all battle every human battles that's every human will experience depression and anxiety to a certain extent but as we know like I mean I know from my work we we doing clinical re trials I do clinical research we're doing trials at the moment and what we are seeing is people without dealing with like toxic thought and toxic issues, they're going to bed as well and damaging their sleep cycle. And it's leading to very similar problems that you've described. So as, as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, we've got these, we, we don't deal with our toxic issues. We don't deal with our for, um, forgiveness and trauma and toxic habits. And we're rushing through the day. And then on top of it, we just on our cell phones. And on top of it, they're eating junk food. And, you know, there's so much more we can do because all of that cumulatively then destroys your sleep. And then, you know, there's this whole feedback loop that people get into. And then they want to take a tablet to fix it. Meanwhile, we've got to stand back, as you are saying, and, and look at it to assess our life and, and consider things like light. You know, consider how you're going to manage how you expose yourself to blue light. So I love what you're saying. Mm, yeah, no, it's so true. And it's um, what, what sort of frustrates me in, in various sort of, I guess, vertical pillars of health and wellness is that people are always looking for one cause of something, whereas it's a lifestyle exactly. combination of factors. Um, you know, poor diet, lack of exercise, poor light management, um, exposure to, you know, 
continual climate um, modulation as well, not exposing ourselves to extreme sort of, you know, cold and, and you know, in, in various seasons. There's loads of different sort of factors that make up, um, you know, a healthy lifestyle. And you, you, you touched upon something very briefly there about sort of popping a pill to, you know, uh, help in situations, you know, when you've, you've got problems. And one big issue that we have in our society today is, is the, I guess, the um, sort of prescription or over-the-counter um, uh, uh, purchasing of melatonin um and people seem to think like well you know i can watch my tv shows i don't have to wear glasses or anything like that i'll just take melatonin tablets now the the issue you're going to have with taking you know an, an exogenous hormone um is number one you're taking an exogenous hormone it's never gonna never gonna end end too well there unless you've got sort of some sort of chronic issue that you can't actually produce your melatonin but you know when you look at i guess the physiology of taking um, melatonin it's produced naturally in the body in the absence of blue and green light so if you're taking a melatonin tablet before you go to bed in the presence of blue and green light that's going to cause all sorts of problems um, to you know your endogenous hormone production and also how do you know how that's going to impact your body when you're actually taking a hormone at a time of the the day that your body thinks it's the middle of the day um not the you know uh, sort of post sunset and it's gonna you know it's it's it, it could be leading to to all sorts of issues down the line that we haven't yet sort of um looked at and, and you know a lot of people swear by melatonin tablets but you know i'm always a firm believer that if you want to if you if, if you take a pill um to make yourself feel better but there's a natural alternative to produce the same effect um it, it's going to be much safer and much more beneficial for you in the long run to use a, I guess, a natural um, mechanism to produce that hormone rather than take it exogenously. Well, absolutely. And you, it's, it's that quick fix mentality right? and, and the external, take something external and put it inside you to fix the problem. Whereas you, what you're talking about is more of a discipline in how we are actually exposing ourselves to light, which is excellent because I talk a lot about the discipline of managing your mind. And so this is totally in line with, with honestly, with everything that I'm teaching, which is, it's, it's wonderful. What if I told you you could double the power of whatever you drink to wake up and energize your brain? My friends over at Bio Optimizers have created a special recipe for you that helps boost brain performance in the morning. They have a product called Primogen V and then Primogen M. You'll be buzzing without jitters or any negative side effects. And they're running a special promotion for you at www.biooptimizers.com forward slash leaf brain. You can get an additional 20% off from the normal package price with the coupon code DRLEAF20. Let me tell you about one of my brain boosting hacks. It's so hard to find time to sit and read and learn more, but there's an incredible app that solves this issue, Blinkist. Blinkist takes the best key takeaways the need to know information from thousands of non-fiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. I love using Blinkist as part of my morning brain building and detoxing routine. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for my audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash Dr. Leaf, try it free for seven days and save 25% off your new subscription. I love what you said earlier on. You talk about hacks to improve your light environment. You know, we're in this technological age. So tell us about these hacks to improve our environment. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's it's number one um, sort of hack really is, is administering sort of um, blue light blocking glasses. You want to be wearing... Um, you know, if you if you only go for one pair of blue light glasses, then make it one um, that you wear for um, pre-bed. Um, your brain doesn't um, distinguish between, you know, if you're letting in 1% of blue light or 100% of blue light, you need to find a pair of glasses 
that have red lenses on them that you can wear after dark um, two to three hours before you go to bed for the optimal secretion of melatonin and the best sleep that you can possibly have. So that's why we produce the Sleep Plus red lens glasses. Now, other hacks as well that you you might want to look at, and it really depends on where you are in your journey um, and how you feel, I guess, about doing some of these hacks. So, for instance, me personally, I'm I'm a bit of a, a light um, specialist, so I make sure that I've got a lot of in in the rooms that I'm spending time after dark. I have taken out all my LED light bulbs that give out blue light and have replaced them with red light bulbs. So I don't have them in every single light in, in my house because during the day I, I don't mind switching on the light and um, that's that's not too much of an issue. But after dark, I don't want to surround myself with with any blue light. And, and the reason being is, number one, um, you know, if, if for any reason I need to take my glasses off, I've got the red light around and it's it's totally fine. Red light is is number two is is restorative. So it makes me um, go into a state, my body to go into a state of repair quicker. Um, but, um, you know, also it's it's great to um, counteract any negative effects that the blue light would be having on my skin. Um, so typically if I'm around artificial blue light after dark, I will also cover my my skin because there's a photoreceptor present in the skin called melanopsin, which detects blue light. So you could be wearing blue light blocking glasses after dark, but if you're exposing your skin um, in large quantities to the blue light around your house, that can also disrupt um, some of the peripheral oscillators and the, the master circadian clock. Um, yeah. That's amazing. I, I don't mean to interrupt you there. That's amazing because I know that people aren't thinking about that. You know, wear, wear long sleeves, cover up your body or when your lights are on at night. That's amazing. Yeah, hack. absolutely. Um, and you guys going into, I guess, the winter months, it would be a lot easier to do than the, mm -hmm. the very high sort of 100 degree um, summer that we're going into here in Aus Australia. Um, so hence why I have the red lights, you, That's you know. Um, now, um, yeah, so, so anyway, on, on that, that can just, the melanopsin can obviously sense the blue light in the skin and, and trigger you know some circadian disruption but also we I mentioned earlier about that study that came out about the skin needing absence of blue and green light after dark to actually recover um, you know and blue light actually accelerates aging in the skin um, and the fact that we're you know exposing ourselves to it much more than we would have done at any point in our lives you know um, I want to protect the skin from, from any aging I want to allow it to go into a state of repair by covering up and not having blue light shine upon it. And I want it to do that because it will in, you know, clear out a lot of the damaged cells during that time, but also, you know, decrease inflammation. Um, another good hack as well is Himalayan salt lamps. Um, I typically have one next to my um, laptop because um, my laptop gives out a lot of a lot of blue light. So I want to have something near it that is going to balance the spectrum of light that's hitting my my eyes and, and my skin. Um, so I put a nice Himalayan salt lamp there. It's very soothing, very nice. Um, there's also a free application for use on your laptop. Oh, sorry. Can, can I ask, sorry to interrupt you, can I ask you, so the, the Himalayan salt crystal, the big uh, lump of Himalayan salt, which you can buy all over yes. the place, is actually helping to absorb some of the blue light. If you put that next to our computer during the day, that can actually help with that yes. process. Yes, correct. Yes. So that balances out the blue spectrum. So, um, you know, you've got to, it's, it's like working outside. If you work outside with your laptop, that's another great free hack because you've got all these spectrum light from the sun shining down, which mm. counteracts the negative blue that's coming out of the um, the laptop screen. So the same principle applies with a salt lamp. You're putting red light next to blue light, which is helping to balance the spectrum. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. Just in terms of time, if you think of the amount of time, so if you've got your little block of Himalayan salt next to you whenever you're working on your computer or going outside if you can to work on your computer, what sort of, I mean, can you just give some kind of time? Because we're exposed for hours to these lights. And so... How much is restorative? Like how much, uh, uh, two, three hours, is it going to help in the day in, in terms of your circadian rhythm? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, any, the thing is, it's, I mean, you can go as, as deep as you want into sort of this um, discussion, I guess. The, the When you look at sunlight, um, for instance, the intensity of, of the light um, and the composition of the visible and vis invisible colors in the sun changes with every minute of the day. Um, so like, you know, I alluded to earlier, you get very high infrared, hardly any UV um, and a lot more reds in the morning. 
Um, at sunset, you get um, very similar to sunrise in the middle of the day, you get very high levels of blue light and UV light. So it changes throughout the day. So any any kind of computer use, whether you are um, or any being under any kind of artificial light during the day is going to disrupt your circadian rhythm. Um, there's just hacks that you can put in place that can mitigate, you know, any of the damage that's being caused. Now, one free hack that I always recommend and I do myself um, and everyone should be doing this is that you need to see natural light at different intervals during the day to send messages through your eyes to the central um, biological clock in your brain to tell the time um, and to, in, a, in essence, prepare the body for suppression and secretion of various neurotransmitters and hormones. So I always suggest that people should get out and be outside for a couple of minutes in the morning at sunrise. They should then be outside for a couple of minutes at 10 or 11 a.m., maybe just, just you know, walking outside if you're working in an office, just standing outside, you know, maybe just walking up and down for about one, two minutes just to allow the light to pass through your eyes and, and reset the clock. Do the same at midday, do the same at two or three o'clock in the afternoon and do the same at sunset. And that will mitigate any of the negative effects that you're getting from um, prolonged computer use or, you know, being under artificial light during the day more than any other hack of putting a salt lamp next to your glasses, um, next to your um, laptop, for instance. That's so amazing. It's, it, That's yeah, really it's a fantastic about, hack. Yeah, absolutely. And I always people always come to me as well and say, well, I, I can't go outside. And I just I just say, well, yes, you can, because mm. there's a certain very unhealthy habit um, called smoking in, in a lot of offices mm -hmm. where people will go out for a smoke break. Mm -hmm. So either just tell your boss you're going for a smoke break when you're not or just say, well, they go for smoke breaks. I'm going for a sun break. Exactly. Um, and, you know, it's it's going to give you that not only that circadian um, realignment, it's also going to increase you know your dopamine and your serotonin again even if you're out there for a small period of time so yeah i can't stress that enough to be outside as as much as you can and even if it's only for for small amounts of time as as well and look there's there's plenty of other hacks as well like during the day we also have um two types of glasses we have a clear lens um that filters down blue light so if you can't have salt lamps next to your computer um you know you can actually physically reduce the amount of blue that's coming out of your laptop and the, the 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 office lights or the office fridge by wearing um, clear lens um, blue light glasses um, that we've created. I mean, there's other companies out there that also do them, but unfortunately they've been tested as well in our labs and the, a lot of the cheaper ones out there actually don't block blue, they block violet light, which actually isn't present in artificial light. So that's a, probably a, a, another discussion. But we also have um, we also have yellow glasses during the day as well, which are a fantastic hack if people have already got chronic stress, anxiety, depression, or, or something called seasonal affective disorder. Because what we've done is we're the first company that's actually put blue light blocking technology into a lens, but also infuse color therapy as well. Um, so we found some studies that showed that um, wow. by brightening, brightening up one's environment um, during, say, a really sort of dull day or whether someone is, you know, feeling anxious or low um, actually lifts mood um, and it, it sort of improves people's sort of sense of feeling happy. Um, so these glasses are called summer glow. When you put them on, they reduce down a lot of the blue light, which is, you know, causing disruption to circadian rhythms and cortisol cycles. But they also have this color therapy in that when you actually look at a gray sky, everything appears like really bright and sort of yellow and um, makes people feel great. And those have been huge for people that have, you know, got sort of real bad stress related um, conditions because they start to feel low. They put these glasses on um, and they just feel great. Um, so that's been really that's beneficial amazing. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, some other hacks as, as well. Um, when you sleep, um, you, you want to be looking at blocking light from hitting your eyes. So wear a 100% light blocking sleep mask. Um, if you have like a car drive past your your window, a neighbor's headlight, a street lamp, maybe, you know, your partner gets up in the night and uses the bathroom and switches on the light. Just a small amount of that light, which which contains blue light, hitting your closed eyes at night is enough to turn off melatonin production um, and increase insulin resistance and, and also affect cortisol. Um, so it's things like even with your eyes closed, you need to be having that sort of 
blue blocking effect as well so you know wear a 100 percent light blocking sleep mask or you can um you know get blackout curtains that are 100 percent blackout um as, as well so um there's a lot so do you have that uh, that mask the night time one that blocks out all the light do you have that in your do you, is that what you have as well with we do. okay so, P, yes. so their listeners can yes. get that through you as well Absolutely. Yeah. So so we we weren't happy again with the, the state of the sleep masks out there. So a lot of people have these sort of flimsy ones that you put on and it puts a lot of pressure on your eyes, which, you know, can lead to eye pressure related diseases like um, glaucoma, for instance, if it's done for a long, long period. But also they weren't blocking 100 percent of the light. And as I alluded to earlier, your brain doesn't care if it's one percent or 100 percent of light hitting your eye. It's um, still going to send the same message to the brain. So, yeah, we've developed this sleep mask that um, has these adjustable sort of eye cavities. So you, you can open, fully open your eyes whilst wearing this sleep mask, have no pressure on your eye and it'd be 100 percent blackout as well. So. You know, we, we just want to, I guess one of our missions is, you know, we want to create the most optimal product out there. We're not interested in, in profits over quality. Um, and that's why we, you know, take, I guess, products that already exist on the market and people are selling them at, you know, very low prices, but they're not optimal and they're not working very well. And we, we improve them and basically redesign them to the point where, you know, they cannot get any better. They are absolutely perfect for your sleep, your health and, and your light management. Oh, that's incredible. Well, that's what, what, a, what a fascinating subject and what a wonderful contribution that this is making to be able to have this kind of hack in our toolbox for mental health and live a, you know, managing technology, like using technology to beat the negative effects of technology. I, I love that. So as an entrepreneur, you obviously extremely busy and you obviously apply all these, uh, use all these different uh, uh, blue, uh, the, the blue box products that you've created, the different glasses and so on. Is there anything else that you do for your mental health? Anything else you'd like to share about how you manage your mental health as an entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. Another another great question. And, you know, I have um, very rigid rituals that I do before I, um, you know, put myself in the mindset to, to tackle the day. Um being an entrepreneur as, as a lot of um, a lot of ups and downs, as you can imagine, uh, you know, even within uh, in a day, you can have sort of fantastic, um, you know, feelings and also very sort of low feelings. So I am um, exactly I am very, um, very strong believer that before I start my day, I meditate. So I um, typically do a lot of sort of um, sort of uh, how do you how do you put it sort of being present um sort of type um type meditation um along with sort of man manifestation um and manifestation about sort of my health and wellness and sort of manifesting exactly how i feel with my eyes closed and how you know if i'm feeling negative thoughts like how i how i want to be feeling um and then those typically sort of manifest themselves later on in the day as you know i feel positive again and and um, an upbeat um, I typically um, take an, an infrared sauna. Yes. Um, in the in the mornings as well. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one at my gym, so um, I'm working out under artificial light in the morning, which isn't great. Um, so I go in and sit in um, an infrared sauna afterwards. Yeah, and I find that that really sort of calms me as well. It's very restorative color colors. Um, and the big thing for me as well is, is I have a, um, a gratitude journal. So before I go to bed each, um, each night, I, um, I write down things that I've been grateful for. So they may be, you know, simple things like I'm grateful for, you know, such a beautiful sunny day today, or I'm grateful for, you know, a piece of, um, business that maybe has been conducted or a podcast that I've been on. Um, they may be gratitude um you know like love um, for my partner or, or my dog or you know very small things like that that creates the mindset of, mm, of positivity mm, yeah and wonderful. one thing that changed dramatically for for me was um surrounding myself with people that sort of are on the same sort of energy vibrations mm, as myself so you know when i was working yeah when i was working nine till five I, I i was around a lot of toxic negative people um and i would constantly feel very low even though I had no reason to feel very low and, and, you know, these people weren't being mean to me, but you know, it was just that the vibe and the, the energy was not matching what I was emitting. 
Yeah. So one thing that that changed me dramatically was surrounding myself with only positive people and cutting out the negative people. Um, and that really helped my well-being and, and mental health. And um, and another hack that really helped me actually completely, well, I suppose it's not completely unrelated, is that um, I used to suffer from um, sort of feelings of anxiety where I didn't know where they were coming from. And one of the biggest things, and, and this was, um, you know, during when I was managing light as well, um, you know, it, it, like I said earlier, light isn't the only thing that can affect these neurological disorders oh, there. Absolutely, it's uh, a whole combination. Just a yeah. And one thing that really impacted me was caffeine. Um, I found that, um, you know, I was drinking sort of three or four cups of, of coffee a day. Um, and my wife said to me, she said, you know what, I, I think caffeine might be an issue as to why you're feeling anxious all the time. And I went cold turkey on caffeine. And after during the, those couple of weeks, it was hell. It was, you know, like um, like someone was hammering my head for about three, two, three weeks. But after that, my anxiety dropped considerably um and i just felt felt absolutely amazing i felt like i had more energy and um you know it was just that feeling in the pit of my stomach of like oh god i'm so anxious um completely went um from from reducing caffeine consumption down to nothing um so that really worked for me um and i know a lot of people will have you know maybe a high metabolism when it comes to caffeine um uh, being being ingested but for me personally um dropping caffeine was was absolutely sensational for my mental well-being wow that's a, well, a lot of great fantastic tips and so now what we need to know is where can people find you and get their hands on these great products that you've developed absolutely so um there's there's a couple of places people can can go um the best place is is our website so we actually um we're based in australia but um, believe it or not, about um, 60% of our um, sales actually come to America. So, um, you know, the, the USA, are I just think, are just so far ahead of the rest of the world in, in their sort of knowledge of blue light, but also their um, passion to actually listen and, and learn about light. Um, so we can ship to the US very quickly. Um, you know, you're going to be getting your product within sort of two to eight days, depending on how, you know, quickly you um uh, you, you choose the shipping method. There's, there's three different ones. Um, we um, can be found on our website, so blueblocks.com, um, which is B L U B L O X dot com. Um, and, you know, the, the products can be found there. You can scroll through 20 different frames we have there. We also do a send your own frame service. So if you have a favorite pair of frames and you want our lens technology in those frames, you can just send them to us and we'll do that for you. Um, and all of our glasses come in prescription, non-prescription and reading magnifications as well. Um, so, you know, you don't have to wear these heavy fit over glasses um, to block the blue light. We, we have obviously the daytime pairs and also the, the sleep mask and the nighttime sleep plus glasses. We have a small amount of our glasses on Amazon in the US as well. Um, so if people felt more comfortable having an account with Amazon, there's maybe four or five different styles that we have on Amazon as well. So we have an approved um, distributor that, that does that for us in the US. Um, but if you want more of a choice, then I would highly recommend coming to the website. Um, but Amazon is also a good place as, as well. Um, and um, I believe as, as well, I'm not sure if we've um, if we've got this set up yet, but we're gonna, gonna offer a discount code to people listening to this as, as well. Um, so they can get 15% off if they buy direct from the website as, as well, um, which is a pretty big saving. Um, so we will um, we will link a code definitely Absolutely. to that as well. And um, yeah, those, those are the best places. I mean, what we do, what we do say, Dr. Leaf, is that um, we understand that everyone's personal situation is different when it comes to, I guess, their um, sort of well-being, um, mental health and light environment. So we encourage people to reach out to us directly. Um, myself and, and my wife, we personally answer questions related to light hygiene and, and light situations. Um, our customer service team will deal with, you know, any other sort of little queries that come in. But we personally answer those because we have the knowledge from the last sort of eight years to be able to answer specific questions. So, you know, Joe Bloggs might write in and say, look, I'm working night shift or I'm, you know, working in an office. This is my light environment. Can you recommend some hacks and also what glasses I'd need? And we are more than happy to answer those on a personal level um, to ensure that everyone gets the, the exact 
you know, glasses and light hacks they need for their specific environment. That is fantastic. What a great service. Well, Andy, this has been absolutely fascinating and you're so knowledgeable about this and you explained it in such a way that we can really understand it. And all those details will be in the show notes, the discounts and the where to find you. So I really encourage people to delve into this because it's really a real thing. It's a, it's we, ha- we have to do everything we can for our mental health and managing technology in the best way possible. So Andy, thank you so much for joining us today and for, th- for really explaining this so well. It was fascinating and I know everyone's enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much for, for having me on, Dr. Leaf. It's, it's been an absolute, um, absolute pleasure. Um, I always love speaking about light and, you know, trying to empower people to make the right decisions as well. Um, one final quick thing just before um, I, I head off is that um, I also wanted to mention that we work with a, a not-for-profit as well called Restoring Vision, um, where for every pair of our glasses we sell, we, we gift a pair of reading glasses to, the, uh, to Restoring Vision, who are based out of California. And what they do is they put those reading glasses on people in the developing world that can't afford to have them and they need them maybe for school or, or for work. So, you know, we want to be able to give back to to people as well. And we want to make sure that, you know, those that can afford to help themselves can by utilizing Blue Block products. But those in the developing world that can't, we can help with, um, you know, proper eye health um, and, um, you know, getting reading glasses on them through, you know, people that can help themselves, um, you know, buying into our community and, and family. To, to help themselves that is absolutely wonderful i absolutely love that and that really is an encouraging thing to know that when you purchase these products to help yourself you're helping someone else which is just wonderful and that's how that's how it should be you know the research shows that we actually improve our own functioning by 68 percent when we reach out and help others so there we go you just made that's your amazing. glasses work more effectively <laughs> thank you so oh. much this has been so exciting and we'll have all the details in the show notes thank you so much for joining us andy my pleasure thank you I hope you found today's podcast interesting and helpful. If you want more tips and help with managing anxiety, depression, and mental health, be sure to visit my website at drleaf.com and to sign up for my weekly newsletter where I also include a schedule of my speaking events and so much more. And follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Just look for Dr. Caroline Leaf. Also, I love seeing all your posts on social media about this podcast. I love seeing what resonates with you and what you've learned. So be sure to continue posting and tagging me and letting me know what you think and how these tips worked out for you. And don't forget, leave a review and keep spreading the word about this podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope you learned something new and helpful. Till then... I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf. This podcast represents the opinions of myself and my guests. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we are sharing is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions or corrections of errors.